Greetings viewers, Car Doctor here, coming to you today with a quick tip for owners of certain Chevrolet and GM trucks with a manual transmission and a failed clutch pedal assembly. Watch this quick video and I'm going to help keep you on the road. Alright, today we got an 03 Chevy truck. It's got a 4.3. This happens to be a uh, four-wheel drive and it's a manual transmission vehicle and we've got a failed clutch pedal assembly. Uh, the clutch pedal assembly is an all plastic unit including the pedal, uh, the supporting bracket and pivot and then the uh, this goes through the firewall and attaches the uh, clutch master cylinder via twist lock you know kind of bayonet style fitting and uh, one of the problems uh, common problems with these is is this uh, this area here breaks out and uh, the clutch master cylinder pops out of the front of it uh, so you're depressing your clutch and you hear a pop and your clutch pedal goes to the floor and you no longer have a clutch release and uh, you're kind of hosed uh, so uh, it made it really super a pain in the butt to replace too. You got to uh, got to access it up under the dash. Um, it's a it's a lengthy process if you follow the book on it. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to show you a couple shortcuts here, and uh, we're going to work on getting this thing replaced uh, a little quicker than the book time of like 2.7 hours labor. Uh, but that includes removing some dash panels and raising the dash we're going to try to sneak this puppy out it's a tight fit it's a knuckle buster and you might want to uh, get yourself a couple units of blood and uh, you know some volume and stuff and some patience and uh, we're going to see if we can get this baby cranked out so if you uh, if you're not replacing the clutch master cylinder and you're not having to disconnect the hydraulic lines you will not have to bleed that system uh, after this repair has been done uh, but if you if there is damage to the clutch master cylinder and you need to replace that as well then you're gonna have to follow the bleeding process on that let's get going on this thing and try to uh, get this bad boy changed out by the way uh, here's a part number GM part number on this product this thing's only like 60 bucks from the dealer so uh, not a big big deal there and i'd probably go with the gm part unless there's an availability issue and you can do some research to see if you can find it uh, online uh, or aftermarket for less and uh, hopefully they're gonna start putting a higher quality product in here maybe uh, it'd be great if they uh, put a metal uh, reinforcement plate on this and alleviated the problem I'm a little bit leery because uh, the clutch master cylinder in this case has been replaced before and along with the clutch so I'm hoping there isn't too much release pressure or something like that I'm hoping it just got damaged during replacement and fatigue and wear uh, caused eventual failure because I don't want to see this thing back in my shop again uh, I don't want to be doing it next time for free so uh, I'll probably put a little disclaimer on there but this is definitely the first step in repairs um, so let's get with it okay the first step in the process is to disconnect the battery we're going to be disconnecting electrical connectors and potentially uh, working around the airbag uh, system so we want to uh, disable the battery and disconnect it so we're not shorting electrical components or causing damage you also want to be very careful during this procedure there's electrical wiring that runs around the clutch pedal assembly and you want to uh, make sure you're not damaging any of that uh, during removal and then during reinstallation you've got to put the harness back up around the right side of the pedal assembly as you're reinstalling it uh, to make sure you get it in there properly you don't want wires pinched behind uh, any fastening hardware and whatnot so let's disconnect the battery I'm just going to disconnect the negative cable and tuck it away so that it cannot come in contact with the battery. Yeah, coming into the vehicle, and first I'm gonna remove the side panel 
that covers a small fuse panel on the side of the instrument panel. And then up under here, I'm going to disconnect the fuse panel. Okay, now we're going to disconnect the uh, electrical connectors on the interior fuse panel and uh, and then and then depress the plastic clips on either side of the panel and tilt it backwards and remove it. Now we're just going to set it off to the side to give us enough clearance here to work on the pedal assembly. Okay, now you want to disconnect the electrical connector to the clutch safety switch. It's a little black uh, connector. It is a, let's see, it's a black six pin connector and you'll just have to depress depress the end of the little retainer deal and pop it out of the plastic clutch pedal. It's a black and white sensor that mounts to the uh, clutch pedal push rod. Then reaching up in the clutch pedal, depress the, uh, on the end of the push rod, depress the two little plastic retainer clips that allow you to push the push rod and, and, uh, sensor assembly back out of the hole a little bit and allow for uh, removal of the arm. Now remove the little wiring harness securing fastener for the wiring harness that connects to the clutch safety switch. Take a little tool in there, pop that out and pull that wire out of the way. This is the wire that on reinstallation, you want to make sure it's over to the right side of the pedal assembly um, so that you can reinstall it properly. Now we're going to remove the three retaining bolts that hold the assembly to the vehicle. One of them being uh, to the rear and above the instrument panel support and then two on the firewall side and their 15 millimeter bolt head. I'm gonna use a 3 8 air ratchet with an extension and a 15 millimeter wobbly socket. Now's where we run into some clearance issues pulling the pedal assembly out. We have to pull the dash panel out a little bit. In order to facilitate that, we're going to have to remove some dash attaching hardware. Let's see if we can get away with the least amount possible to get this dash, you know, to come forward about half an inch or so to clear that pedal assembly. And the way we're going to do that is first removing this center dash support. There's a little cover here pull this plastic cover and remove that bolt and then over here we're going to remove these two uh, just behind this panel um, and then we're probably going to have to remove this upper dash panel which sucks uh, to get it some attaching bolts up here but let's see how loose it'll get us if we remove those three attaching points. Okay, now we're going to need to access the uh, retaining bolts behind the uh, dash panel. And first we're going to pull the uh, little door jam cover 
enough to allow for removal of the little kick panel cover here. That all pulls apart with little clippies retainers. We set that aside. Now remove this bolt here. And this one up in here. Yeah, that doesn't give us enough. Shoot. In order to remove the upper dash panel, first lower the tilt steering column fully, then gently pulling out on the fascia that surrounds the instrument cluster. Remove the fascia, and then access the screws behind the fascia along the front edge of the upper dash panel. There is also one screw behind each of the two vents on the passenger side that you'll need to remove, along with the screws behind the side panel on either side of the cluster. You will also need to lower the front knee bolster on the driver's side and loosen the glove box and glove box cover area on the passenger side and the screws behind that. So on the right side, you remove the panel just like on the left side and the two attaching screws up top. You want to re remove these bolts down here and then uh, pop down your glove box and remove the, what, four screws, one there, 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 and there. And as I was accessing this, this fell out of the back side of the dash there is a date code on it. I, I can't tell what, I can't decipher it. Um, but you know, when, when stuff falls out of the backside of the dash, um, it's a mechanics rule that, um, it's, it's, it's free game. So, uh, Hey, if I don't complete this project and, uh, I turn green and I'm not able to, be satisfied. Um, there you go. Remove the two vents on the passenger side to access the retaining bolts for the passenger assist handle, which are underneath. Then remove the passenger assist handle by reaching in the duct locations and depressing the white release thing and pulling out on the handle on either side. Remove the two A-pillar trim pieces from above the dash area on either side. Now pull the upper instrument panel cover out and up around the airbag assembly and uh, to remove the retaining clips that attach it. Be able to just kind of grasp the top of the A-pillar trim pull down pulling the retainer out and then just pull it out and this should allow you enough room to pull the dash cover now be careful the sun load sensor and the wiring connector there um, looks like my sun load sensor popped, popped out want to make sure and put that back in the the hole on the reinstallation and go ahead and remove your upper instrument panel trim cover now remove the four 
upper instrument panel retaining screws located on the firewall side of the instrument panel. Now on the right side, there's one more hidden mounting bolt up in the vent area back behind the side vent off the instrument panel there's one more bolt that you need to get out now remove the heater floor vent on the driver's side by removing the plastic tab that supports the left side of that vent and then just pulling down and pulling it out like that we need to get at this bolt here uh, underneath of this freaking module. So we got to drop this module down off the base of the steering column so we can access the bolt. I think it should be the last remaining bolt. The module just slides into a bracket. You can slide it out towards you. We'll just leave it hang there. We need to access this bolt behind the module bracket. So we'll remove the module bracket so we can get at that bolt. Remove the two other nuts at the base of the steering column. Okay, there's one last bolt right at the driver's side front, just below the windshield area. It goes down through the firewall and secures the uh, instrument panel support assembly cast assembly you got to remove that bolt now you just yank out and pull up a little bit and support this assembly up so that you can get it far enough forward and up uh, to clear the pedal assembly I'm gonna probably place a little uh, dunnage under the steering wheel to support the assembly as it's pulled out a little bit now pull your clutch master out of the uh, Out of the housing assembly and just set it up top here again That's going to require disconnecting the electrical connectors. I described before and then just gently setting this aside in this case I did not have to disconnect any hydraulic lines. I'm just going to leave it supported there then I've got my steering wheel supported with a little bit of dunnage underneath here. It's pretty ghetto, but I think that's going to do it. And now it's just a matter of weaseling this assembly out of here. Well, I got the old one out. I did have to Stick a screwdriver in here and pry out slightly against the, the little cast uh, instrument panel support frame and just work this out. Uh, it comes down this side, the outside first, and then twisting it and pulling down and out. So it'll this has to go in first. And uh, that's about it. As you can see, this is where it broke out. Cheap plastic garbage. So, just reverse the, uh, reverse all that crap to put it back in. And, uh, you're going to need a couple of units of blood if it was anything like uh, the way I did it. I uh, was able to cut a couple corners, but I'm not sure it saved us any time. You can disconnect the lower steering shaft and uh, kind of back the column out a bit, uh, provide a little more clearance. Uh, but other than that, it's just a matter of uh, blood, sweat, and tears, and uh, a lot of blood and a little bit of sweat. and. Maybe not so many tears, but uh, a couple four-letter words like, I love Chevy, and uh, I love engineers, and I think uh, 
I think engineers should come visit my shop sometime when we're doing uh, Chevy Chevy clutch pedal assemblies. Come come on down. I share a beer with you and uh, get out my uh, large pry bar and give you an attitude adjustment. Just kidding. Wouldn't do that. And you wouldn't either because you watch the Car Doctor channel. And the Car Doctor channel subscribers are good people. We care about people. You got a good heart. Um, and you love Chevrolets. And you love clutch pedal jobs. And you're going to be a pro at this, just like me. Uh, the next one that comes in, though, I think I'm going to send down the road because I'm getting a little bit old to be contorted into those types of positions. If you do have a herniated disc between L4 and L5, uh, this is not a particularly good job for you to be doing um, unless you have lots of narcotics on hand. Um, so anyway, uh, I gotta go get an infusion and uh, we'll wrap this thing up. But I uh, appreciate you watching, and thanks for the likes and subscriptions to my channel. I really appreciate it, and I wish you good luck with your repairs. Have a good one.